Good morning, beloved. Peace be with you. Today in our first reading with, from the Acts of the Apostles, we're in Acts chapter 15, and we're kind of getting to uh, where we can, we can see, we've seen already, we continue to see the early church was growing and was peaceful and was united, and then was not united and not peaceful and still growing, slowly. Uh, but we see some of the early debates, some of the early questions, they come, and this is, you could, you could call be the beginning of the, one of the first ecumenical councils or whatever you want to call it. And this is how the church, this is one way the church does have to grow, and just like you and I have to grow, you know, sometimes we don't grow in knowledge and expression of our faith until somebody challenges us, you know, and says, why do you believe that? Or explain this to me, you know, and then you have to figure out, well, how do I explain what I believe? And that's the church too. How do they explain now salvation? This is the question of salvation, right? The, the Jewish believers the, from the Pharisees, their, the Pharisees' whole existence was about um, saving and preserving the Mosaic law, you know, beginning with circumcision that came from Abraham and then living out this law, this relationship with God uh, through the Mosaic, through the laws that Moses laid down. And they, they died for, to, for that part of their faith. And so, of course, they're really going to be strong and not want to let that go so easily. Of course, the new, now we have <clears throat> uh, Paul and the apostles, and they're, they're teaching something that's kind of, that's new, or renewed, uh, you know, this a salvation through Jesus Christ, and not through circumcision and the Mosaic law. And so there's this battle back and forth. Um, and, and this is, this, you know, question of salvation still goes on today, you know, even just among not so much even among other religions, but even within Christianity, you know, Catholic Christians and non-Catholic Christians, and they'll ask, well, what do you think you have to do to be saved, you know? And, and typically, the, usually the non-Catholic Christians will say, oh, you just have to make a decision. I, I choose in your heart. I believe, I, I accept Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior, and now I'm saved. Now I'm born again. And, and as Catholic Christians we look at that and say, where is that in the Bible? <laughs> you know, like they like, you know, where is that? Well, when I make a personal decision in my heart that to accept Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior, now I'm saved. Because Catholics, uh, just like the Jews, we don't look at salvation as a one and done thing. It's not a one-time thing. Oh, if I just do this, now I've got my ticket to heaven and I'm good to go. Salvation is what Jesus says in the gospel, becoming his disciple, or what St. Paul teaches, uh, becoming a child of God. Notice the word, though, the emphasis, becoming. It's this ongoing process of what we also call conversion. It does begin once in time, but continues all through our life, leading up to eternal life. Even, look at, this is even how the Jews look at it, because we have to, we look at salvation as entering into a covenant relationship with God. It's not merely based on my decision. In fact, the beginning of it often is not based on our decision, huh? This is the other debate, you know. Baptism by my own personal decision when I'm old enough to decide for myself or baptize, baptize children when they're not of age, not of conscious reason, you know. And we can see that practice, though, or entering into this new covenant relationship with God, beginning at baptism by the parent's choice, not the child's. It's the same thing, actually, that happens in the Old Testament. Tell me which child that was eight days old chose to get circumcised. Huh? The parents chose for the child, right? This is the precedent from Old Testament and through New Testament, a consistent pattern so the, it's based on, first, the parent's decision and choice in the faith to bring them into this covenant relationship with God. And then that's only the very first part. To be, that's their first moment in time when the salvation begins, but it has to continue through the teaching. So notice they even emphasize salvation through first circumcision. That's how they entered the, the, the covenant that God made with Abraham. And practicing the mosaic laws according to the mosaic practice all the laws that moses taught 
You know, he taught a lot of them, and many of them are right in the book of Deuteronomy, huh? The whole book is practicing, and, because this is how they grew and became a child of God. And, and, and through, really, we could just call it, salvation comes primarily through obedience to what God lays down. Obedience to God's laws. Okay, so, uh, and we know that in the Mosaic law, obedience brought blessing, and disobedience brought a curse. Obedience united them more fully with God. Disobedience separated them from God, right? We say sin separates us from God. This same pattern happens and when we get to Jesus and what you and I call, what we hear every Mass, the new covenant in Jesus' blood. We enter into the new covenant relationship with God, beginning at baptism, as Jesus taught, and continuing, though, through the obedience to the commandments that Jesus laid down. So that's what we'll hear this Sunday as we continue um, in John. We'll hear that Jesus says, you know, uh, you, you re remain in me as I remain in you. If you obey what I command you, you will remain in me. If you obey what I command you. And Jesus gave a lot of commands. Go through, read the Sermon on the Mount, his teachings there, Matthew 5, 6, and 7. He gave, he summarizes all of his commands, which we'll hear this Sunday again. Love one another as I love you. But that's just a summary statement of everything that he taught, of all of his commands. This is, so salvation is this becoming a child of God, beginning at baptism when we're born again into the family of God, and, but then continuing by being raised in the family of God, this obedience to the laws uh, that Jesus taught, what he also calls another place, the laws of the Holy Spirit. This is how Jesus summarized it for us as well in, in the great commissioning at the end of Matthew when he said, go and make disciples. Go and make people children of God. Make disciples by first baptizing them and then teaching them all that I've taught you. See, there's a baptism that begins once in time, but then our whole life has to be living out in obedience all that Jesus taught us. That's how we become children of God. When we die, God willing, we have become a child of God. and Because we've been living out the commands of God, the commands of our Heavenly Father, the laws of God. So that's what's most important for us today to remember and take with us. How, do, how, are, how are we saved? Well, our salvation be, is becoming a son or daughter of God that begins in baptism, but continues by my obedience to God's commands, by God, to God's law, to all that Jesus taught us. So today I can look and always, always say, how am I doing in my obedience to Jesus' commands? Right? Because remember, Jesus said, who is my brother, my mother, my sister? Who is my family? The one who does the will of my heavenly Father. Obedience to the commands of God. Obedience to Jesus' teachings. This is how we enter into the family of God. So how, am, how are you and I continuing and growing in our obedience to God's commands, our surrender to his will? Um, this is how we are, will be be able to grow. It's not just coming to Mass or celebrating the sacraments that helps us grow in holiness. It's obedience. The reason those sacraments work is because it's obedience to what Jesus told us to do. He told us to celebrate the sacraments, right? He, we also have to be in constant communication with God in prayer, reading the scriptures, knowing the scriptures, praise and worship God regularly, not just at Mass, but all day long, we praise in God in our hearts, you know. This is, becomes our lifestyle as disciples in obedience to Jesus. So how are you and I growing in obedience, especially the times when that obedience causes us to suffer and it hurts? We don't want to. I don't want to do that, Lord. <laughs> That's the time we grow in obedience the most, the fastest. So, Father, we just thank you for this great gift of salvation that you offer us of becoming a son or daughter of God. We pray that you would strengthen us with your Holy Spirit, your divine strength and divine life right now to help us grow more today and more this week in obedience to your command so we can grow uh, in, in becoming a child of God.
and grow closer in our salvation. We pray all these things together in Jesus' name. Amen.